Welcome back to the Coding Fanatic YouTube channel. This is your host, Richard Clark. I'm a full stack Android developer with an eye for efficiency. That means I'm all about learning and doing things as efficiently as possible. Whether it comes to learning new things in Android, learning how to deal with coworkers in the workplace, or just, you know, overall creating, working on your own projects, I go about it as efficiently as possible and teach you to do the same. And if that's something that you're interested in, then well, hit subscribe and turn on notifications to see new videos like this each week. For those of you who are uninitiated, I have started a project where I'm learning how to draw information from a real-time database using Firebase and display it in a list within an application. I've run into some walls along the way, but uh, I found a new tutorial and things were looking pretty good so far. Uh, everything was working, uh, I was following the steps, I didn't have any compiler errors, but uh, I recently finished the tutorial and while I had no errors in Android Studio, my app is completely blank. So here I am trying to figure out exactly what went wrong. The first thing I did was I went back through the app through my code and I added comments for each step that I followed thus far. Having comments will make this easier for me to remember when I come back to it. Sometimes you write code, you're not always going to remember every little thing that was in there and reading through it will take some time. So uh, my goal is to make this easier in the future when I refer back to this project so that I don't have to spend as much time trying to figure things out and I can see exactly which part does what. The next thing I did was I confirmed that the database reference object was properly instantiated. Uh, one of the things I did here was I didn't start from scratch, but I followed, a, followed from where I was with the previous tutorial, even though it ended with a app breaking with a, with a bug or a compiler error that kept me from compiling it. But either way, I kept picked up from where I left off last time and I confirmed that that object was in fact instantiated the right way. After this, I overrode the onChildAdded method to set up the child event listeners, which would update my app anytime any changes were made on the back end in the database. This way I don't have to manually make changes to the app each time I change the data that it's pulling. After this, I instantiated an array adapter object, which would be used to contain all of the data that's being pulled and displayed in the list view. And uh, that, was, that was about it. After this, I made a few finishing touches to the on-child on ch on change adapter, and I set the adapter for the list view and compiled everything and went to see my app, and the screen was blank. Not entirely sure what's going on, but it seems like I just can't catch a break with these tutorials right now. I don't know what's going on, but one thing I'll note is at least this time, there are no compiler errors. So at least we know that there's a bug somewhere in there. Whereas with the previous tutorial I followed from Rip Tutorials, the there was a bug, there, there was a compiler error in the code. So the code was actually had syntax errors in it that prevented me from compiling it. This time I can actually compile it. It's just that there's nothing on the screen for some reason. So I suspect something went wrong with the list view, but everything else seems to be okay. But then again, I am still fairly new to this part of the process. So my plan from here is just to review my code and look for any, try to find any lot, any issues I might have, any problems that I might have introduced into the code. You know, I mean, it, it is a little taxing to be honest, because this is the second tutorial I've gone through and it's like, how hard could this be to pull information from a real time database and display it in a list view. But I guess I'm finding out for myself now. You know, but it, all in all, it, the process has been pretty great thus far. It's just this error. But I suspect it's probably something, probably something small. I doubt it's anything huge. But you know, I'll, the my plan is just to go right back to the tutorial and really confirm piece by piece that I followed it to a T, which I'm pretty sure I did. But I'm gonna, just gonna double check because people make mistakes. Know, and then uh, from there, uh, we'll, we'll figure out what happens. And if I can't seem to get it, then I'll just find another tutorial. We can do this all over again. Hey, I can do this all day. So, you know, uh, what, what are your thoughts? Well, what I have the code right now. It's it's up on my GitHub, and which is, of course, linked in the article and in the description below. So, well, why don't you, for those of you who are, conf who are experienced with real-time database and Firebase, well, take a look, let me know. Uh, is there anything that you would do differently? Let me know in the comments below uh, or submit a PR. Either way, you know, hey, share the information. If you think that you can help me out, then, you know, I really appreciate it. 
Uh, but, you know, other than that, like I said, just going to go back through it and review my code. And th this is a big part of the software development process, too, is, you know, you're not always going to figure it out on your first try, even if you find proper documentation. Sometimes you make mistakes along the way. Other times the documentation is not as well document. It's not as well documented as you might think just because it's on a website or they have a video or, or they have a series. Hey, things change. In fact, one of the things I noticed with this tutorial was in when they were setting up the child event listeners, the methods that were when they overrode the, the methods for the listeners, the parameters for the method that I have are different from what they had in their video. So it came in as data snap, their video says data snapshot, and then the object was called data snapshot with lowercase letters. Whereas in mine, when I overrode this method, it said data snapshot object, but it said data snap, it just says snapshot in lowercase. So when I was following the tutorial and I got the red squiggly saying, hey, what is this snapshot? What is this data snapshot that we've never seen this before? I looked at it and said, oh, okay, this is the parameter, but his parameter is different from mine. So I just have to change mine to match the, so that's there to get rid of the syntax error. So, you know, that's just one example. And of course I'm not blaming the guy who made the tutorial because when they made it, that's probably how Android Studio auto-populated the overridden methods. I have no control over that, neither does he. But, you know, my point is that mistakes can be made. So, you know, just double check your work. So once again, this is your host, Richard Clark, signing out. Uh, head on over to codingfanatic.com and join the mailing list, and you can see new updates like these first before I even hit YouTube, uh, when I talk about, like I said, my project updates, career advice, Android tutorials, and more. Uh, so yeah, like I said, uh, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to hit that bell so that you can see when I upload new videos each week. And uh, I guess I will see you all in the next one. Peace.